Hey, 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 welcome back to a Real Estate Wisdom Podcast by Wish. I'm your host, Vishal Kapoor, a realtor with Century 21 Miller Real Estate Limited, a brokerage located in Oakville, uh, one of the renowned brokerage uh, working in the industry for almost 13 years now. And uh, today we're going to talk about in this episode, real estate market report for July 2024. We'll break down the uh, latest trends, uh, economic factors, and what's driving the market. So whether you are a buyer, seller, or just curious about the real estate landscape in greater Toronto area, this episode is packed with uh, valuable insights. We're going to dissect the report I'm going to give you my uh, views and what's uh, the president of the board for Toronto Real Estate Board is saying, what for Oakville Milton Real Estate Board is saying, uh, what their insights are, and we're going to dissect that. So let's get that started. But before we dive in, uh, I have some exciting news to share with you. Our next episode will be our 50th episode. And it's been an incredible journey. And I want to thank uh, each one of you. Uh, special thanks to our guest, our backend team, our brokerage uh, for their support. And special thanks to our listeners and watchers like who providing their comments and giving me feedback like and how to improve how to do things so i'm so excited so to celebrate this milestone we have something special planned so make sure you don't miss it now get back to our market uh, overview in July 2024, the Greater Toronto uh, area saw a modest uptick in home sales compared to same month last year. Realtors have reported 5,391 home sales through TREB MLS system, uh, marking a 3.3% increase from July 2023. And this rise in sales is partly due to the uh, recent rate cuts by the Bank of Canada, as we expected, uh, which have made borrowing more affordable for people. But this data is also like only not, it just TREB, uh, it's giving the indication, but there's also other boards who uh, list like the MLS uh, system because TREB doesn't have all the data yet for the whole area, but it's very close. So we're getting a good indication on that. Now, talking about the home in inventory and prices. Home inventory has also increased significantly, uh, with new listings raised, rising by 18.5% year over year uh, to 16,296 in July 2024. So in July, we have around 16,296 homes for sale in the market. And this increase in supply has helped as uh, ease some of the competitive pressures on prices, um, as we expected. The MLS Home Price Index Composite Benchmark uh, decreased by 5% year over year, uh, while the average selling price saw a slight decline of 0.9%, settling at a um, million, uh, 100,006 and 617. So I've increased like an, almost like a 1%. But composite benchmark is, we have seen the decrease of 5%. So in the sense, our prices are decreased from last year to this year, around 5%. We used to tend to see like a 5 to 10%, even like 15 to 15% increase. But uh, as we know, affordability is the main concern. But now we have changing, started seeing some changes. So economic factors and interest rate, uh, the economic landscaping is shifting with the Bank of Canada having cut rates twice this summer. These cuts are expected to continue, and I'm hoping that they will cut like around 
half a percent, like a you know, 0.5 basis point this September. Um, so we will see like in the more activity then. And this will potentially lowering borrowing cost further in the coming months as well, which is a very good news for buyers as lower mortgage rates mean more affordable monthly payments. However, it is essential to note that uh, while lower rates can spur demand, as all we know, right? They also need to be managed very carefully to prevent a sudden surge that could deplete inventory and drive prices up again. I know right now we're looking to like we have so many houses on sale, but there's so many people who want houses as well. So it's not even that like the current inventory is like a, not a lot of inventory. Soon as change, the rate cut happen, more rate cuts happen, we're going to see the spur. No doubt about it. Seasonality and market trends. Well, real estate markets are inherently seasonal. As we see, like, you know, we get winter time, it gets slow, then spring, it's rise up, summer, it gets slow again, and then we come fall, we see the spur again, right? So, and July is typically a slower month because a lot of people are vacationing, people are busy. However, this year, the market has shown resilience with the steady flow of transactions. Townhomes have been particularly popular uh, with an 8.3% increase in sales year over year. And this tends towards more affordable housing, like it make more sense, like a townhomes cheaper than detached houses, right? So townhomes and condos uh, is likely to continue as buyers seek cost-effective solutions in a higher priced market. The other factors which, you know, we, we are blessed in that sense is the immigration and population growth. It's more demand. So immigration continues to be a significant driver of demand in the GTA and Canada's strong population growth, particularly in urban areas like Toronto, is expected to sustain long-term demand for both ownership and rental housing. And this influx of new residents will likely keep the rental market tight as newcomers often rent before buying. Well, when they come over here, even they have money, they don't want to pay those taxes. And like, you know, even they got the PR, uh, they're okay. But some of time, like they're coming as a work visa only or a student visa, and then they're building up their credit. So it take around like two to three years for them to buy. And that's, that's going to continue, right? So the other factor is we're looking into is like in housing development, what's going on in the construction world. On the development front, we are seeing a shifts towards multi-unit and rental constructions. So if you like to invest, like this is the time, and I will say like in the multi-unit, that's going to be future. And it's already here, like people cannot afford the single family home. So a lot of people going on the multi-unit um, uh, home or some of the family actually, they're making a multi-unit home. And so their family can live brothers, you know, their parents, sometimes as like, you know, friends. Also, uh, they want to live on those multi-unit. Um, so multi-unit is going to be in demand, in my opinion. Developers are focusing on townhomes and condos uh, due to their cost effectiveness and uh, faster build times. And this trend is expected to persist as financing cost ease and new policies support multi-unit developments. So multi-unit development, if you want to invest and you're thinking like, you know, condo is not the place anymore, there's other way where you can invest and make some money. So like I mentioned, types of properties in demands, townhouses always going to be in demand because of the affordability and condos as well. I know there's a lot of inventory right now with assignment sales and everything, but that's going to be still in demand because like people need to rent somewhere and those are the affordable one which they can even can rent, right? So 
Single detached homes uh, are also expected to see a rebound as mortgage rate decline, attracting more buyers back into the market. And for those people who are thinking of upgrading their houses, this is the time because the prices of the uh, detached houses or bigger houses has came down like oh, even though the percentage decrease, like and that's more in dollar wise, right? So in that sense, like it would make more sense. Like, you know, if you're thinking of, uh, you know, if your family is growing and you want a bigger house and that's for your dream house and you already have built up the equity on your current house, it's a good time because now the mortgage you're going to get, uh, it's going to be lower or sometimes it's not as significant somebody who's coming and in, in putting only uh, like a 20% down, right? So as you know, like, you know, anything above a million dollars, you're paying more than 20%, right? So in conclusion, uh, to wrap up, the GTA real estate markets is showing promising signs of stability and growth uh, with increasing inventory, easing borrowing cost, and strong population growth. The market is poised for a steady recovery. So whether you're looking to buy, sell, or invest, staying informed is always a good idea about these trends, uh, which will help you make uh, better decisions, isn't it? Thank you for tuning in. And I will say, if you enjoy this episode, don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. Feedback is a gift. And I'll happy or will be very grateful for your feedback and what you like, what you didn't like, how we can improve. Because, you know, if I want to grow, I need to improve on there. Learn from my mistakes, do this, these things. I don't mind like doing mistakes like, is it, because I want to learn from those ones and make it better. So, love to get your feedback. Stay tuned for our next episode uh, where we'll continue to explore the dynamic world of real estate. Until next time, happy house hunting. But hey, before you go, remember our 50th episode is just around the corner. We have some special surprises uh, in store, so make sure you tune in. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover, feel free to reach out. Your feedback help us bring you the most relevant and insightful content. So, content? Did I say content? Content. My apology. See you next time. Bye for now. Disclaimer. The information provided in this podcast is for informational purpose only and should not be considered as financial or investment advice. Consult with your professional before making any real estate decisions.